I'd like to do another ray tracing example. This is again a converging lens with a focal length of 20 centimeters, uh, just like our last example. But this time, the only change I've made, I've taken my object, and instead of having the object be located farther away from the lens than the focal point, I've made it located closer to the lens than the focal point. That's the only difference. I've just moved it to a different position. And what I want to do is look at the ray tracing procedure, the same ray tracing procedure we've used before, and see what that tells us about where we can locate the image formed by the lens in this case. So let's go through the same story we've done before and trace that out. We have to follow the same three principal rays. So I'm going to use a straight edge here. Principal, principal ray number one is the same as it always is. Straightforward enough, I'm going to take it straight over. Remember, parallel to the axis down below until it reaches the infinitely thin lens. That's ray number one. It moves that way. Now remember, when, principal, when, you, when a parallel to the axis ray reaches a converging lens, the whole point of a converging lens is that it immediately redirects that ray to go through the focal point on the other side. So this ray will then go straight through my focal point down there. Let me get this set up. If I can try to be accurate. Straight through that focal point. And off into the distance. That's principal ray number one. And it looks like I missed. That's going to mess me up a little bit later on. Mm, OK, I'll fix this. Since I want to be precise, you'll notice I was off by a little bit where those two lines came together. Eh, I, you don't want to be too picky about that sort of thing, but I'm a perfectionist. I'll do what I can to fix that up. So let's do this again. Often, maybe I'll just stick my pen there so it stays in place. OK. That looks better. All right, that's principal ray number one, parallel to the axis, and then it goes through the focal point when it comes out the other side, because that's what converging rays do, converging lenses do. Principal ray number two, as usual, is the easy one. You start at the tip of your object, or whatever point you care about. You start at your object point of interest, and you draw principal ray number two so that it passes directly through the center of the lens without bending at all. There's one. Well. <laughs> There's ray number two, excuse me. Principal ray number three is always the trickiest one when you're not in that first easy, oh, it's always the trickiest one. Uh, in this case, principal ray number three, the story is usually you go straight through the other focal point, the one you haven't already used. And so in this case, it looks like principal ray number three should go backward, right? I know if I follow this, through the other focal point would go that way. Clearly that's not the ray we want, but here's the trick. What we should actually do is follow principal ray number three forward, but along this same line. So the line that would have gone through the focal point if I had gone backward, I just follow that ray forward instead. And this is going to be another example where I reach the center and my drawing of the lens wasn't tall enough. That happens. It's not uncommon. So again, I'm just going to pretend my lens is taller because the principal rays are just sort of handy, handy tools anyway. We know in real life this ray would miss the lens and would go on forever that way. But because we're using our principal rays to locate the image, we're going to pretend the lens is tall enough to block all of them. So I'm going to take this over. That's how principal rays work. There's nothing complicated about it. So I'm going to take this over. And then remember, the idea of principal ray number three is that it's like ray one run backward. We, principal ray number three is always a ray that will wind up being parallel to the axis on this side, so that if it had come the other direction, parallel to the axis here, and it hit the lens, it would bend down and go through the focal point. It's just like ray one run backward. So let's do that here. We know it's coming forward, not backward. So it comes up as if from the focal point, comes through our object point, and then we'll bend at the lens, and we'll go parallel to the axis here. So let me line this up as best I can, and bring that across. All right, those are my three principal rays. And of course, we know the whole point of this 
is that we are looking from the other side. We are looking at this. Our eyeball is over here, located where we can see these rays coming through the lens and coming this way. Now looking at that, we don't see these rays converging at a point on this side, so there is not a real image in this case. Instead, it looks as if these rays are all coming from somewhere back there. And what we need to do, what we always do, if the rays don't converge to a real image on this side, what we always do is just follow them backward. We just trace backward. So each one of our three principal rays, we pretend, remember, as far as our eyeball is concerned, all that matters is where the rays look like they came from. Our eye doesn't see the object because it's blocked by the lens. All that our eye can perceive is what these rays are showing us. And so wherever it looks like these rays came from, that, that's what it looks like. Makes sense. So I'm going to trace these rays backward. Each one, just line up with the ray that we drew. Make sure I get this straight. Again, you do your best to draw straight lines. I usually do dotted lines past here just to indicate that I'm doing a sort of imaginary extension of, keep this straight, imaginary extension of where it looks like the rays came from. So that was ray three. I should have labeled these. This was ray one, this was ray two, and this was ray three coming out. So uh, that was ray three traced backward. Here's ray one, which I will again, I'm doing my best to line up carefully with it so I get the right line. Am I the right distance from my ruler? Yeah, I am good. And I'm going to trace this backward too. And again, dotted lines. And then finally, ray two, this last one. I'm going to line up with it as best I can. This is the only one, yeah, yeah, they're, they're all going this way, I guess. So here's ray two, make sure, oh, I'm not quite the right distance, okay. Hmm, well, that's so much for, so much for perfect lining up. Perfection is impossible with these things when you're doing it by hand. If you use a computer, you can get some really good drawings sometimes, but. Okay, so tracing these backward, tracing the three backward, what I see is that they seem to meet up pretty close to a point here. They seem to meet up right around here as the place where it looks like all three of those rays came from. And that means that this will look like the tip of my image. That, th then this is my image. This is my image position, and because it's behind the lens, because none of the three rays, in this case, because the three rays did not all really pass through that point, it's not a real image, but a virtual image. And let's measure out some things like positions. How far is this? Ray three is great for finding the position. S prime in our book's language. How far are we from the lens? Let's measure this in centimeters. I'm coming over. There is my point. I get something like 29.5 is what I've just measured. 29.5 centimeters. That's my position is 29.5 centimeters behind the lens this time instead of in front. And the height, if I measure the height of this thing, let's measure the height. Again, in centimeters and measuring as best I can in the middle, I'm getting about 19, 18 and a half or 19 centimeters. Uh, average the two. I don't know, I'm just estimating. And this 29.5 was probably plus or minus 0 0.5 centimeters if I want to put some reasonable uncertainty on it, you know, half a centimeter either way. My drawing's pretty close to that. Maybe it should even be plus or minus one centimeter up here. I'm, I'm really just roughly estimating uncertainties. Don't, don't read too much into them. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, plus or minus, that's too small. 0.5. Again, don't worry about the uncertainties. We've got this story. I've got, I've measured, and this is my H prime, I guess. My height H prime is 18 or 19 centimeters. So again, this is how we use ray tracing 
for a converging lens if you're closer than the focal point. Same three rays, same principle, and you can just trace them through, and then here you have to trace backward to see where it looks like they came together. Let's really quick double check this with the lens equation again, just to see how that plays out. Uh, the lens equation, as usual, thin lens equation, tells me 1 over f equals 1 over s plus 1 over s prime. So that means in particular that 1 over s prime is going to be 1 over 20 centimeters minus 1 over s. My s was 12 centimeters, 1 over 12 centimeters. Okay, um, I should be able to do this. 1 over s prime is, looks like least common multiple of those is going to be, let's call it 60 centimeters. So this is going to be 3 over 60 centimeters minus 5 over 60 centimeters or minus 2 over 60 centimeters. And I can immediately see that's 1 over 30. So my s prime equals negative 30 centimeters. That's my image position. And hey, look at that. That's easily what I measured. That, that's very consistent with what I measured for my ray tracing. So even my, that probably should have been plus or minus one centimeter, but even my cruddy little measuring of this dot came out really well. You know, you saw that these didn't really meet at a point very well. I've got negative, negative 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters is right. And the negative just means I'm a virtual image behind the lens where the rays didn't really pass through that point instead of a real image in front of the lens where the rays did really pass through that point. So I've got that, and I guess I could do the same thing for heights. I know that h prime over h equals minus s prime over s, which in this case is minus negative 30 centimeters over positive 12 centimeters, or what is that, 30 over 12 is 10 over 4, 5, Halves, is that right? 30 over 12, 5, 30 over 12, 10 over 4, 5 over half plus 5 halves. And let's see, my h was 8 centimeters. Yeah, is this going to work out at all right? Yeah, okay, okay. So 5 halves, that means that h prime equals plus 5 halves times 8 centimeters, which is 20 centimeters. Okay, I said 18 plus or minus, okay, they had that 0.5 was clearly a way underestimate for uncertainty, but it's in the same ballpark, right? I'm in the 19, 18 or 19 centimeter high point in my drawing, and H prime comes out to be actually 20 centimeters. So it's not half bad, at least if I have that. And again, the positive, the fact this came out with a positive number, remember I had a minus sign here that canceled out with a minus sign there. Minus a minus is a plus. The positive number means that this is an upright image. If the arrow was, if the object arrow is pointing upward, the image I'll see will be an arrow pointing upward. It's just taller. All right. So that is another example of ray tracing. Uh, double checked with the lens equation to see how it came out. And uh, again, it works pretty well. Uh, the third principal ray is the tricky one. The third principal ray is always the one that's the sneakiest to get. But it's also often the, easy, the, the most handy for finding the height of the image or the location of the image because it's this, ni it's this nice parallel line. I like it a lot. So uh, good things to do. Hopefully it gives you a sense of how, how ray tracing works with the converging lens in this case.